everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Designing Gals. I am Doreen from Door Designs, along with Melissa from Burlap Boutique and Lori from Hardworking Mom. Um, today, you're going to get all three of us. We're going to be doing different designs. I'm not really sure what Lori and Melissa's doing, but I think they're doing either fall or Halloween. So for me today, I'm going to be kicking off a fall series, and I'm going to start it on today's Designing Gals doing a fall swag. Over the next five or six days, I'm going to be doing candlesticks, centerpieces, wreath, a big wooden box, and kind of how I'm going to set up my table for fall display so you guys can kind of get some ideas. And all the different things, they're not going to have all the exact ribbons or colors in every design, but I'm going to show you how to incorporate different ribbons and different designs into doing a very cohesive fall room. So hopefully you guys can get some tips and creative ideas to um, start designing your house for fall, or you may have your house designed already for fall. I'm going to kind of use my theme. It's going to be this little scarecrow guy, and I'm going to print him out on a bigger sign. It's actually in my shop. Um, and I'm, I like the scarecrow look and that's kind of what I'm going to be going with, but I like it because of the blue that's in it. It's got the mustard, it's got some yellow and oranges, and then it's got kind of the moss color in the back. So nice, uh, fall colors. So on today's swag, I'm going to be using all these colors, but I'm going to be putting in a little bit of blue to kind of start bringing in the little scarecrows, um, jeans and stuff. So in starting out with the swag first, before we get designing it, most people think a swag is just basically for doing on a front door and or a lantern. But what you can really use swags for is, yes, the lantern, also on your fireplace mantle, because you can make them as long as you want or as small. You're going to start at the bottom. I do at least with the longest pieces. And then you just kind of keep adding to it and just building up your swag. You can also use them over an oval mirror or a squared mirror. And you can, you know, align it along the top. And I actually think I have a mirror in the back room that I can take some pictures when we get this done and kind of show you how it looks. So when you're designing, kind of think Think outside the box of places where you may need a um, swag in your home. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera so we can get started and then I'm going to kind of walk you through and answer a few questions as I go. So let's get the camera down here. A lot of you ask me where I get all of my greenery and florals and picks and I got to tell you I shop all over. Um, I shop anywhere from Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, Hobby Lobby Michaels, and then I kind of move into my wholesalers and things like that. But there's a lot of places you can get different pieces without having to have a um, tax exempt cert certificate or, resells or a resale certificate. So I'll try to post some of those places that I get, like at Craft Outlet, White Bayou. Some of those places have excellent product, um, a lot of fun, unique product that I shop at that you don't have to have a, a sales tax ID number. You, uh, they sell to anybody. So I'll post some of that stuff. But for today, we're going to be doing uh, the swag. We're going to be doing some bright oranges and reds with some little berries. I've got some a little bit of blue morning glories that um, you guys were all so nice to correct me that I called them petunias last time I used them. And everybody said, no, those are morning glories. And you're right, they are. Um, we're going to add a couple of pieces of maybe like this wheat color. So that kind of goes with the background of it. And these came from... I think Hobby Lobby, I think this came from Hobby Lobby, and most of this stuff came, florals that I have were, were from last year, except for the Morning Glories, and I got those at Ben Franklin. But everything else except for this one right here, I think I got this one at Randolph Mercantile last year, and you can tell I have, I cut pieces off it and just uh, use, not the whole bush, just what I need. So we're going to start and kind of play with it. So like I said, I'm going to start with my longest piece and we got to kind of determine how long you want your swag to be. I got to move my ribbon. So we're going to make this swag. Let's see. I think we're going to make this swag about 36 inches long and then once you get it done if it's a little bit too long we can always kind of play with the top or the bottom and make it a little bit shorter so i'm going to start with these picks first and all i'm going to do is i'm going to lay them well let me get this little orange thing off here real quick 
I'm going to lay one on top of the other because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep layering until I have it to where the fullness that I want. I'm going to leave a little place in the middle about the width of my hand because that's where my bow is going to go. So all I did was layer one on top of the other. So we're going to have to bring that a little bit shorter. I'm actually going to trim this one off a little bit. And I'm going to be using some zip ties when we get it to where we want it. Okay, next, I've got two pieces of the wheat. Um, so I'm going to use both pieces of those. i got to get my stem cutter here because these are like steel. But I don't need them this long. So I'm just layering it on top. That's all I'm doing, layering it on top. And that's all I've done on both sides. If this was wired a little bit better, I'd kind of pull these apart, but it's not. So they're gonna lay kind of flat. Okay, then I have this stem that I got at Hobby Lobby last year, and I only have one, so I'm hoping they get some more in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep one long piece for the bottom of my swag, and then I'm gonna use these shorter pieces for the top. So we're gonna cut this apart. So I'm gonna lay this one on top, going down, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna keep one piece out and I'm gonna use the other one for the top. And I'm gonna bring it up just a little ways. Actually, I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna save this one though because I might need it to add a little bit more height at the top. So this is what I mean when I say when you have a few pieces left on a, uh, greenery or something, don't throw it away because you'll end up using it. Okay, then I'm going to cut a few pieces of this greenery, and I think this greenery came from the greenery market. Okay, we're going to cut about four pieces off of that. Now, I want this to be a little bit longer, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack this together, and then I'm gonna put a little bitty zip tie to hold it together. And I'm gonna use a green one so you really won't see it. I had my zip tie going the wrong way. The zip ties are so little, I almost need my glasses on to uh, see it. Okay. So I extended that shorter stem into a little bit of a longer one by adding, by stacking it and just zip tying the stems together. So there's that one. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. I keep all my different zip ties in my jars over there, which makes it really easy when you're designing to try to keep the tools that you use a lot and those of you who have followed me know that I use a lot of zip ties. Okay, just gonna zip tie that together. Oops. I gotta redo this one because I didn't put it on top of the other stem. Okay, 
And if you wanted, you could put a touch of glue with your glue gun where your zip tie is if you want, if that makes you feel better, but it's pretty secure. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this up and see kind of where we're at. And I haven't done any fluffing, but here's kind of where the swag is. So this is probably all what I'm gonna call the filler background, whether it's greenery or the little wheat and things together. And I'm gonna fluff it just a little bit, and then we're gonna start adding more of our bigger components, our flowers and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this before I actually put my flowers in, because I wanna start holding it together before it gets too wide. So let's zip tie these. And I'm gonna put two. So see how easy so far this is? It's basically just laying out the colors and the textures you like and just start layering. Okay, it's zip tied, it's not going anywhere. So if you wanted, you could use this as a base, like on your fireplace mantle, with just a bow in the middle without adding anything else, or if you had a lantern at, at this end of your mantle, or any kind of candles or pumpkins, but this is a good just baseline for a swag. See all the different textures and colors? But we're gonna add flowers and stuff to it. Okay. I'm gonna add some oranges and reds, but I don't want my entire wreath to be, or a swag to be all fall as far as orange, yellows, and reds. So I'm also gonna add in a little bit of this lighter colors to kind of bring a little bit of a pop to it. But I'm gonna go ahead and put just a couple of these together. And this stem came from Hobby Lobby last year. Let's get this out of the way. So kind of the same thing. I'm gonna stack these two together and I'm gonna zip tie. You don't have to, but it just kind of keeps your design together easier if you kind of zip tie along the way. So that way, if you put some stuff in and you don't like it, you can just pull these two out because they're attached. Note to self, I definitely need to bring my readers next time. And I'm still gonna keep that center a little open so we can put our bow in. It's actually had a little bit of cooler weather the last couple of days in Missouri. It's been wonderful. It was 105 Saturday when we went to one of our grandson had a show me state games for soccer and it was miserable. Okay, so there we are starting to add the flowers.
Okay, I'm going to have to turn the swag just a little bit so I can kind of see how full I want this. Okay, I think I'm going to put two of the bigger up here and then one or two at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is these have a pretty long stem. I'm going to take just a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to work its way down through where I've got all these other stems zip tied. You see how pretty that looks? And I want the flowers to kind of go different directions. I don't want everything to come up and lay flat because I want the swag to be nice and full. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. And I'm just kind of placing them first to see where I want them. But I think I want to try to get three in the bottom. Okay, I'm going to glue these in. Like I said, you could zip tie these two also if you wanted. I've done both. And this swag's gonna be inside my house, so I know by hot gluing it, they're gonna be strong enough because it won't have any of the outdoor elements on it. Okay, let's let that glue set up for a few minutes. Okay. While I'm waiting for that glue to set for a few minutes, I'm gonna work on our bow. Okay, for the bow, I've got this beautiful orange velvet that's gonna kinda of be, I'm not gonna use a lot of it because it is so um, rich in things. I don't need to put a ton of it in this one. And then we're gonna add it with some fall pumpkins, and it's got some of the green, some blue, some creams, with kind of that mustard colored, colored, colored solid ribbon. And then we're gonna put this plaid in there because it's gonna bring in my blue. So let me get this. Um, this ribbon I got from Brian Lang Designs. He does live sales. I think Brian does them every week, but he's got some beautiful ribbons if you're ever looking for kind of over-the-top designer ribbons. And they are more expensive, but you're going to use so little of it, it really does last a long time. So let's go ahead and start on our bow.
and this is really thick ribbon to work with. And I'm probably gonna make my loop about six inches. Maybe seven. Yeah, seven should be plenty. If you're new to making bows, I do suggest you do measure your loops, especially for the first few bows you make. It just makes it easier to A, get kind of a starting point. So now that I know both my loops are the same size, I, I don't have to measure it each time. But for the first part of it, especially if you're new doing it, I would highly suggest that you measure. I'm gonna layer this on top now and keep that one, that tail going up, and then we're gonna make our loop here. We're gonna pinch it and bring it together. And I'll trim all these tails when I get done. Okay, so there's two ribbons. So it's just kind of like an X. And I'll play with these a little bit more when I get all the ribbons on. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a solid. And that's going to be that mustard. And you can use as many ribbons or bows. They're pretty with just one ribbon in them also. I'm going to loop it. And all I'm doing is pulling it towards me and then back underneath. You can use your easy bow if you want. So now we've got the three ribbons and then we're gonna end it with the plaid on top. And the reason I'm gonna end it with the plaid on top because I want that blue to show a little bit with my, for my sign when I do my wreath. pinch it and I'm going to make this last loop just a little bit shorter so you kind of have a little bit of a layered look to it. Okay so there's the bow with all the different colors. So I'm going to zip tie this Now see how pretty that looks and that's this bow filled in that gap and that's what we wanted it to do so now we have a few little holes here and different things so now we're going to go back i'm going to attach the bow but then we're going to go back and kind of just do some fillers of where i think it's got a few holes Okay, I'm gonna show you something a little bit different. I'm actually gonna attach the bow with this covered 
wire that you can get at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And I'm gonna actually wrap some of it down the actual um, swag and that'll hold any other pieces that may not be in as tight. Plus it's gonna give us a little whimsical that we can do some little curly cues. So we're gonna cut some pieces here. So I'm gonna take this through the center of my wreath or a bow and I'm just gonna wrap it around. This also covers up my zip tie in the middle and that's how it's gonna look. So now I've got this long wire, so we're gonna lay that like that and I'm just gonna take it and wrap it around all the stems. to make sure I get all my ribbons on the right side before I wrap it. And now I'm just going to bring it around through my grapevine. Wrapping it. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up through the middle and I'm gonna curl it. And it's just gonna add another little dimension to our sway. Okay, so see how that has just a little bit of that curly cue coming out? But it's now wired my swag in much tighter, all my pieces. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. But I want to kind of fluff this a little bit so I can kind of show you where we're at with it. I'm going to dovetail all the ends of the bow. And I'm just doing these all different lengths. I'm not really watching. Okay, let's take our wire on the other end. Exact same thing. And then here's the end of it, and we're just going to curl it. Okay, see how pretty that is? Okay, where I have a couple of little bitty gaps, I'm going to put in a couple of the blue morning glories because I do want to bring in just a little bit of blue. I don't want the blue to overpower it. We're going to kind of bend this around. Perfect. 
perfect. Now, like I said, if this swag was gonna go outside on a door, I would be using more zip ties to secure where I'm kind of doing these fillers. But since it's not, I'm not too worried about it. Okay, now let's I missed one of the tails. Okay, let's get all this cleaned up. Now on the tails, you can curl them. See kind of how the orange, I kind of made that a little bit because it's such good, nice ribbon. It just kind of makes it flow a little better. But here's the complete swag. So this one is actually going to go, I think, on my fireplace mantle. But you could put this on a lantern. Now it would have to be a big lantern. If it wasn't real tall, I would be cutting some of these taller pieces back. And I've got my tall green one, so let's see what it looks like next to a tall lantern. It hasn't been cleaned yet, so don't look too close at the dust. But this is my good old standby lantern. I have about three of these big ones in different colors. But look how pretty this would be on this lantern. Now, if you want, you can bend these back, you can take them forward, or you can cut this back if it's too long for your desire. And you can kind of curl this so it comes around. But this, would, this is what it would look like on a lantern. So then on the back side, if you're a designer and you want to make these to sell, all of this mechanics that are on the back, I would cover all of those before I would ship this or sell it. I would take just different leaves. Um, I think I had some leaves over here. I would just take leftover leaves from my design and I would take hot glue and I would just glue them along the back, just like that. So your customer wouldn't see all the different mechanics of your swag design. So guys, this is day one of the fall design, and this is kind of what's gonna be the colors and the ribbons and stuff that's gonna go in my sunroom for this fall season. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some tips. I hope it gives you confidence to try to do your own swag. And you don't have to do them this big, but just remember, just start laying stuff out and just layer, layer, layer as long as you, as high as you want it, as long as you want it. Start with your longest and just kind of tear up and then leave room. I usually, usually use the space of my hand, leave room, and that's where your bow is gonna go. So I'll take pictures of this. Um, later today and then uh, tomorrow is going to be fun day Friday. I don't know if it's going to be tied to this. It may or may not, but I have some really cute, simple, simple pumpkins that are going to be adorable that I, I wanted to do for fun day Friday. And then we're going to jump right in next week for the candlesticks, the centerpieces and everything like that. So hopefully if you guys can pick out your color scheme and your stuff, 
get stocked up because we're going to be doing all the different pieces to decorate your room. So have a great Thursday. Thanks for uh, watching. And don't forget to, uh, if you're not following my page, please go out and follow Door Designs. I also have Door Designs Showcase or Door Designer Showcase. If you haven't joined, it's a free group. What it is, is you can go out and uh, showcase your designs and all different people will give you comments. Some aren't as good as the others, but you got to take the good with the bad. But most people are very supportive in the group. And also, if you're not following Designing Gals, please go out and join our Designing Gals market. Um, that's where Lori, myself and I, we and Melissa, we post our designs. We upload different videos, new products and things like that. And then we also have Designing Gals market or community. And that's our free group for Designing Gals where you can also go show pay or showcase your designs, your videos, everything you do for your business to help your business grow. So once again, uh, thanks for joining. I'm Doreen from Door Designs and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.